What's up guys? Welcome back to Hands On Channel. I'm out here in the shop today uh, doing some, believe it or not, survival type stuff, uh, you know, for the SHTF that's basically knocking on our door right now. Any moment now, I expect the hammer to drop. So uh, I put some new tires on the XR and I put a brand new chain and sprocket on it and I changed the gearing a little bit. Uh, gave it a little taller rear sprocket and a little bit smaller front sprocket and that made this bike just so much better as far as uh, uh, the takeoff speed, the power, the torque that you feel, that sort of stuff. But uh, anyways, I was out here just kind of wrapping up and checking all my workout and everything. And I thought, you know, it'd be a good time to do a video and just kind of catch up with you guys. I've been busy because I've been working on this bike and I didn't record any of it because, man, the tires took me forever to get on. So I'm glad I didn't try to record it. It took me like three or four hours to change the tires out because these new ones were so stiff. But anyways... I've been watching the news and uh, of course I've seen what's going on over in Afghanistan. I think it's atrocious. I've seen several things that uh, are just making me shake my head. I'm just like, what in the hell is going on here? Who is controlling the asylum? Because apparently it's not Joe Biden. I mean, the guy, he can barely find his way into the White House. We saw that video, hopefully you guys saw it, but last week the Secret Service had to like point him how to get back into the White House. So, I mean, this is just un freaking believably Orwellian, all the stuff we're seeing going on. He's clearly a Manchurian candidate, and Biden is not really responsible for any of this stuff, although he's the figurehead, so I'm going to blame him for a lot of this stuff. When I say Biden, I mean all the controllers that are behind Biden. You know, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, uh, on and on and on, George Soros, Bill Gates, all the other globalists, you know, Klaus Schwab probably, all the other globalists that have a, you know, new world order agenda for the Great Reset or Build Back Better are all the ones that are in Biden's corner. They are the ones that caused this catastrophe in Afghanistan. They did it on purpose. You know why? Because back in, I believe it was the 60s, uh, there were a couple of eggheads that were, you know, liberal eggheads that basically came up with their own little strategy of how to destroy the United States. And what was it called? It was called Cloward and Piven. And they wrote their little book and their little stuff, and all the Democrats have basically been following that playbook ever since these fools wrote this back in the day. And what was the basic premise of their, uh, their book, their ideology? It was overwhelm the system. So that's what they're doing in Afghanistan. That's what they're doing here in the United States of America. Everywhere you look, everything in the economy, everything, when you go buy gasoline or when you go buy bread or anything else that you need to sustain yourself, uh, when we talk about property rights, all these other things that are going on right now that are under attack in the United States of America, gun rights, your, your God-given natural rights are being attacked on a daily basis. Every single day, there's something picking away. Death by a thousand cuts is what the Arabs called it. So, uh, you know, maybe that's what their strategy is. I don't know, but it's overwhelmed the system. Look at the border, for example. What are they doing? Overwhelming the system. Why are they doing that? Well, to bring in millions and millions of new Democrat voters. That's why it's pretty damned obvious. And not only that, that's not the only reason for that. The other reason that they're doing it is to basically uh, muddy the culture. And I don't mean that in a racist way. If, you know, if Hispanic Americans want to come up here, you know, Latinos want to come up here to the United States and assimilate to our system and be a part of the American culture and system, I welcome that. I'm not talking about those kinds of people. I'm talking about the ones that are coming up here and they don't want to assimilate. They want to bring, you know, old Mexico with them or whatever country they're coming from. Now, with all this Afghanistan crap that's going on, uh, Biden's already talking about bringing 30,000 refugees into some military camps here in the United States. And, and of course, eventually they're going to release those, those refugees out into a town near you. Now, are all of those refugees bad people? Probably not. Probably some of them want to escape the rule of the Taliban and they want to come over to America and become Americans. But I would argue that a good percentage of them are going to be infiltrators. They're going to pretend to be uh, pro-America and want to come in here. And then our government is going to release them out into the wild, out into your city. And then the next thing you know, we're going to have the same sort of circumstances that they have over in Afghanistan and Iraq are going to be right here in the United States of America. Why would they do this? To overwhelm the system. Cloward and Piven. Go check it out. I mean, it's just, it's atrocious what's going on, guys. Every time I turn the news on, I'm just like, what in the hell is this crap? You know? We were talking about guns. Well, Gun Control Joe just gave billions of dollars of American weapons to Islamicists who helped perpetrate the 9-11 attack. So, 
billions and billions of dollars worth of not only, you know, M16s and who knows what else, M60s, all kinds of stuff, probably high power sniper rifles, all sorts of stuff that we just left behind because some bureaucrat decided it'd be cheaper to do that than to bring the stuff home. They left uh, military vehicles. I don't think they left any tanks or anything big like that, uh, but they gave them airplanes and, and set up an air force for them. So, I mean, the Taliban now has an air force sponsored by the United States of America. They now have weapons in military vehicles sponsored by your taxpayer dollars, my taxpayer dollars. And if you're not pissed off about this, uh, then your blood isn't red, I guess, because you know I don't know what planet you can be from and not look at this stuff and be pissed off and not be pissed off rather. Uh, you know, I saw a thing on here. Uh, Seventy percent of voters disagree with Biden's pullout strategy, where we basically just left. I mean, it's atrocious. Ten to forty thousand Americans. We're not talking about Afghanis. We're talking about American contractors and their families that were over there and were promised when they went over there that, oh yeah, yeah, we'll keep you safe. Yeah, we'll keep you in the in the green zone where there's no nothing going on. You know, you'll be uh, protected by us to some degree. Of course, you're taking a risk, but you know you can come over here and make some good money, and you know it'll be fine. We'll protect you. And then the Americans. Not, you know, not the soldiers, the administration, just like in Vietnam, you know, the soldiers didn't lose Vietnam, the, the politicians lost Vietnam and they did it intentionally to, uh, for one, you know, uh, kill a whole bunch of American soldiers and for two, uh, to spend our money all over the world. And in the end, I'm sure we did the same sorts of things in Vietnam. We probably left and left all sorts of, of weapons and stuff behind for the Vietnamese soldiers to get to get more power, to more control. I mean, whoever is making these decisions clearly has never looked at history because, you know, I mean, if you believe the mainstream story on 9-11 that bin Laden was the one that was responsible for all that, well, the CIA created bin Laden during the Russian invasion of Afghanistan, which failed. And also, I've been thinking a lot about this Afghanistan thing. And, you know, uh, as far as I know, I think the British tried it back in the 1800s sometime. They tried to, you know, invade Afghanistan and they couldn't take it. And then, of course, the Russians, we all know about that, or most of us do, back in like 89. In the late 80s, the Russians went into Afghanistan and they failed. Well, look what happened to the Russians right after that. I mean, the USSR broke up. Now, was that the only contributing factor that caused the breakup of the USSR? No, it wasn't. But it was a major contributing factor. I mean, you know, you can look at the Roman Empire, for example. You know, one of the reasons that Rome fell was because they had spread themselves out so thin that no one was really around to protect the capital of Rome anymore. And also, uh, the Romans learned a thing that, you know, basically, as you, as you conquer these other places, you can't change them culturally. You know, although the Romans had gone in and conquered all these other, you know, cities and towns and, and, and different peoples, they couldn't actually change the culture. And that's what we've got going on between the difference between the Afghanistan people and the Americans. I mean, I was talking with my wife about this last night. I mean, you know, it, these, these poor people over there, you know, and I do feel sorry for them, but it doesn't mean I want us to send our people over there uh, to bail them out of trouble. I want them to stand up for liberty on their own. Maybe if we could encourage that instead of going in and basically acting like, uh, you know, dictator, little mini dictators ourselves, the way, we, the way we go in and we occupy a place for over 20 years. Instead of doing that, maybe we should have tried to figure out a way to, uh, you know, make the Afghanistani people want freedom and fight for freedom because that's what it's going to take. You can't have an outsider. You know, it's just like that old thing, you know, I mean, you can't help somebody that doesn't want to help themselves. That's the best way I can describe it. You know, on a person to person level, if you've ever tried to help somebody and they're just uh, incapable of, of receiving help, let's just put it that way. That's the nicest way I can put it. And, and, you know, I think these Afghanis and a lot of people in the Middle East are like this. They have been brainwashed by the Koran and by Sharia law and by Taliban and Al Qaeda and any number of Hezbollah and any number of other, you know, radical Islamicist uh, little mini dictators basically is what they are. Warlords is what they are. They have a warlord society. And 
here comes, you know, Uncle Sam, we're going to come in there and save them. And, you know, people are trying to point blame around. And clearly the blame all goes on Joe Biden's shoulders for this, the way things are going down right now. The reason that there's 10,000 to 40,000 Americans still left in there in Afghanistan that can't get out, can't get to the airport. He told them they're on their own. The reason that is, is because Biden pulled out before, you know, he didn't have a, he didn't have a, a strategy in place. You know, one of the generals told him they recommended keeping like 2,500 troops in Afghanistan just to keep things stable until the new government could kind of get control of everything. But no, no, Biden pulled out instantly. And the withdrawal, I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen it. The pictures of people clinging to the landing gear and, you know, the two bodies flying out of the air because they tried to hang on. I mean, that stuff is heart wrenching, man. I mean, it's, it's horrible. All those people on the runways, you know, the massive traffic jams. What I want you guys to take away from Afghanistan is while they are a warlord society and they're a lot different than us culturally, obviously, and I would argue that our cultures are incapable, you know, it's like oil and water. We can't really mix those cultures because if someone is a true Islamicist, they believe that, you know, they should kill the infidels. That's their basic belief, you know, that death to the infidels, you know, and that reminds me, uh, there was some, I don't know, CNN, MSM reporter and she was standing there saying, oh, yeah, yeah, they're yelling death to America, but, but they seem mostly friendly. I mean, if that doesn't, if that doesn't exemplify last summer when people, reporters were standing in front of burning buildings where people were being beaten up behind them, and they said, oh, well, it's, yeah, it's a mostly peaceful protest. I mean, clearly, guys, this is propaganda on such a level that, I mean... I can barely keep up with it. So that's why I haven't said anything for like the last seven days. I've just been absorbing this stuff going, okay, okay. I see how this is going to be. But the lesson from Afghanistan is don't think we're, we're insulated from something like that happening here in the United States because we're not. We are not. Maybe, maybe five years ago we were, but we're not anymore because, I mean, I can just feel it. When I go out and I'm dealing with other people, especially people on the left, I mean, they're, they're, again, it's like oil and water. We're so different that there is no common ground anymore. We're essentially like the, you know, the American relationship with the Isl Islamicists around the world. You know, that, yeah, they'll give you lip service and they'll tell you they're going to do all these things and let your people out. And meanwhile, they'll blockade the airport so your people can't get out. And Biden... I mean, my God, the guy is acting like he can trust the new Taliban government. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, they say they're going to let people out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what in the world this guy's thinking unless he's trying to get 40,000 more Americans killed and just, again, overwhelm the system. This is a catastrophe for the United States military. And part of the reason why is because, uh, you know, Part of the thing that keeps people, your enemies, from attacking you is, you know, they look at your, your history of, uh, of warfare. <clears throat> they look at your, your history of, of successes and failures. Arguably, the Americans haven't won a war since World War II. Everything else has been uh, lost by the politicians in charge. So Biden armed the Taliban. They've got an Air Force. All of those troops that... Uh, you know, he was bragging about just a week ago and how this would never happen. It happened. Over 70% of the voters have turned on Biden. Supposedly, his approval rating is finally below 50%. And I'm shaking my head going, how was it ever above 2 or 3% to begin with? That tells me everything I need to know about the people that do polls. So... Guys, we're in a world of trouble here, and, you know, I've tried to tell you about, you know, private property rights and stuff like that and how important that is and prepping up now, stocking up now, buying land, buying the things, the tools that you're going to need to survive in the SHTF that is, I mean, it's inevitable now. I mean, there is no, uh, if it's going to come anymore, it's a matter of when it's going to come. So, guys, I hope you're stocking up. I hope you're prepared. Uh, I'm, I'm just hearing so much off the charts tyranny happening in Australia. I feel very, very sorry for our Australian brothers, you know, and I've got a few Aussies that watch the hand on, Hands On channel. I appreciate it. And, you know, who knows, this video may be banned over there because I'm speaking negatively about the Australian government, but uh, they're setting up basically, uh, what they call it, on Gateway Pundit, they called it vaccination camps. 
because if you don't get vaccinated, you have to go into this concentration camp that uh, the Australian government is setting up all around the country. So I told you uh, the last video I did how the CDC had a similar plan on the books. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. Share these videos if you, you know, are concerned like I am and you want, you know, you just really want to be left alone. But we're rapidly approaching a point where we're not going to be able to be left alone anymore. The silent majority, if it still exists, is going to have to rise like lions out of slumber. That's all I can say about that, because if we don't, guys, we're going to end up just like Afghanistan, just like Australia. And the globalists will come in and lap us up like nothing. Everything that we've done, everything that our founding fathers done, have done, all of the soldiers that have died in, in warfare trying to promote freedom and liberty, supposedly, around the world. And in most cases, they were trying to do that, whether or not the government was trying to do that or not, or was going to let them finish their mission or not. That's the real question. So, I mean, the military is, is being purged right now of anybody that has a conservative viewpoint. I put a little post up on the community forum the other day about the different threats that basically if you question the COVID narrative or if you question the election narrative, the mainstream narrative, you know, and you believe that somehow Donald Trump is going to be reinstated and, and you know, 9-11 conspiracies and different things like this, then you're a domestic terrorist now. You're on a potential domestic terrorist watch list. So, you know, that's nothing really new because back during, uh, I believe it was Janet Reno, they had another list of potential domestic terrorists. And it was like, basically, if you're a Christian, if you're a conservative or a libertarian, if you uh, followed Ron Paul and you believed in Ron Paul, that was the one that stood out to me because I've got a Ron Paul sticker on the back of my truck. All these different things. You know, I went to a couple of Ron Paul rallies back in the day. So I'm sure even back then I was on the potential watch list. Now. They never came and visited me at my house or anything, but we weren't at the level of tyranny that we are now. And I hope you guys are, are seeing this because, you know, again, most days, I, I mean, a couple times I tried to do a video and I'm just, I'm at a loss for words. My mouth is just standing there like, uh, what do I do? And all I know to do and all I know to tell you to do is prepare now like there is no tomorrow, guys. And I'm not trying to scare people, but I'm telling you, uh, there's food shortages going on all around the world in our country right now. I don't expect that to get any better. I expect that to get worse. So if you want it, you better go get it and stock it up now because it may not be there come fall. I mean, this is we're watching the fall of the republic here, guys. That's what this is. Cloward and Piven collapse the system, you know, overwhelm the system and then come in and swoop in and bring in socialism and communism and Marxism and the new world order. That's what this is. Stay prepared, guys. Stay strong. I stand for liberty. I hope you do, too.